What's up, real world? Twisted Lug. I hope everybody's good. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate all of you. So here in Florida today, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful treat I've gotten this morning. Beautiful treat. I've been able to witness natural puffy white clouds actually forming before my eyes. How many times do we get the opportunity to actually observe these totally natural puffy white clouds just form? totally naturally to form this beautiful hazy natural cloudy sky it's not every day not everybody gets to see this these wonders of nature right not every not everybody gets to see these wonders of nature actually take place right before their eyes so what a treat what a treat that was and last night before i get into today's topic last night also uh leading up to all the beautiful natural cloud forming today um, boy, what a dusty, dusty, for lack of a better term, you know, night. Um, so again, I always say, you know, I use vehicles as a reference because I, I like to detail, like get crazy into detailing. So I did vehicles again last night. And then like two hours later, they hadn't moved. And two hours later, I'm like, what is this already all covered all over it? So then that's when I took the flashlight and looked at the air and said, oh, well, that's what it is. That's what it is indeed. Anyway, just thought I would point that out. So uh, one thing I want to talk about today, unfortunately, we have to talk about it again. So this latest uh, school incident, right, with a twist, with a twist. Now, I would never make light of any tragic thing or, you know, uh, alleged event or whatever. I say alleged because I wasn't there, right? Not doubting anything, just saying I wasn't there. So I can't factually say anything that I didn't fact check for myself. So with that out of the way, there's a twist on this one, right? Because we know how the, the media is. Anytime the mainstream media, they hear one of these events like this, it's like, oh yeah, come on, white male, come on, white male. And then they're like, yep, got him. <laughs> white male, we got, oh, wait a minute. What, what's that? Oh, God transgender oh no well we can't put that out there on blast because you know we can't because we have to lift those people up and demonize these people so we can't do that so apparently the the bad guy was uh a female pretending to be a boy and living as a boy so you know there's some potential mental illness already identified there right so already that's an indicator that maybe it's not the pew pew that's the problem Maybe it's the person behind the pew-pew that's the problem. But I bring this up again because of, you know, the, the politicians and other people disgustingly take advantage of tragedies like this. And the gun grabbers come out of the, come out of the woodworks, right? Because they say, oh, the solution, this is why we have to get rid of them. We have to ban them. We have to ban them. And we used the reference before, right? There's a lot of people that don't know, but they hear the word assault. Oh God, assault weapon. That's so terribly scary. Just like if people didn't know any better and the analogy I've used before, if we had butter knives and if we labeled some butter knives that do the exact same thing and work in the exact same way, but we called them assault butter knives, people would, oh, those are scary. What do you, what does anyone ever need an assault butter knife for when you can just have a regular butter knife? You don't need to butter 10 pieces of toast at a time. Why ever would you need to do that? Not even making the connection that they could butter just as much toast with the regular butter knife as they could with the one, with the one that has the, you know, the scary label attached to it. So it's just silliness. It's just absolute silliness. There is no actual type of you know, assault. There, there's not. It's just people, you people know. I know you know. So I'm preaching to the choir. But you know, it's it's frustrating to hear because they mislead people all the time. Mislead people to get into an agenda, and we all know, we all know the reason that they want to take those away, right? And they want to limit the amount of ammo that you have. But I have to point out, as I've pointed out before, do you think back in the day, right, when people used to come in with pistols to a bank and they first started saying stick them up put the money in the bag no die packs well back then there was no die packs yet right 
get to that. But, because these were deterrents. What did they do? Well, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. We have to, uh, we have to ban guns. We better ban guns. Did they do that? No, because that's a ridiculous solution. That's not a realistic solution. And it's ridiculous because money is number one. Not, you know, to them. Money, number one, not people. But they know they have to do something realistic to protect that money. So what do they start doing? Armed guards, right? Bulletproof glass. Didn't, didn't take a genius. Didn't take rocket science. It didn't take a long time. Lots of banks started using bulletproof glass. Security measures, right? Security measures. Lots of them have guards. Because these are realistic things. And you know what these are? These are deterrents. I would think the bad guy, the robber, is going to choose a bank, perhaps, that doesn't have an armed guard. Most of them probably have the bulletproof glass now. Some, I'm sure, don't but here and there. But most of them probably do. Because the money is worth investing the money to protect to them, right? Money is worth it. Money is number one. we got to protect it at all costs. We will do stop at nothing to protect the money. So the bad guy is going to choose one that's a softer target, right? No resistance. Maybe no guard. Maybe no glass. They can get away with it better. And that's what happens. So why is it with these school incidents, when it comes to kids, we know that action, boom, just like that to protect money. It doesn't, overnight, they are going to take measures to protect money. We all know that. That's been proven, right? That's not even up for debate. They will stop at nothing to protect their money. But when it's children, why is it that all they do is stand around and debate and say, we need this ridiculous thing, we need that ridiculous thing? Why Why is that? Why? And why don't they actually take measures? Why do they only, you know, they, they scream for things that aren't realistic and things that would never solve the problem? That's something we have to think about. Why is that? But surely, you know, kids are the most important thing, right? Surely they would stop at nothing more than anything else they would protect to protect kids, right? Well, that's odd. So, so why is it that when it comes to protecting kids, they just jump right to this? Well, we gotta, we gotta ban guns. That's what we go. We just gotta ban guns. There's no other way. This isn't gonna happen until we ban the guns. But when it comes to money, they're like, jump to it, make this, fix this immediately. Protect that money now. Put guns there. Put bulletproof glass there. Why? Why do they do this? Now, some schools do do this, right? It's become a thing where a lot of schools will do this. Why they've never done this, I have no idea. We've talked about for a long time. Why are banks fortresses, but elementary schools are just, you know, roam on in. Anybody, hey, welcome on in. Find your way. Take a self-guided tour. Why, why is that? It would almost make a crazy person think that they value money more than anything else. And will stop at nothing to protect that. But when it comes to children, they won't actually do that. They will they just use these things as a as as leverage to push an agenda that has nothing to do with protecting people and actually has more to do with a not even a constitutional right but a constitutional duty, right? Where it starts talking about that the duty of the people and tyrannical government and all that. Almost seems like that's what they're shooting for. So why don't people stand up? There, Like I said, there are some schools that now do have armed guards or they have a resource officer or whatever, right? And these events are far less likely to happen at schools like that because usually these bad guys or the crazy people, whatever they are, uh, they do a little bit of research they check out and just like the bank they want a soft target they want a target where they can walk in and you know with no resistance whatsoever it's kind of like these gun-free zones like you know different hospitals and all different places where there's signs that say this is a gun-free zone not allowed to keep your gun bring your gun in here better leave it back in your car 
So what that tells the bad guy or the crazy person is, oh good, I'm probably going to be the only armed person here, so this is all sitting ducks. None of these ducks can protect themselves from me. Because the bad guy, laws don't apply, right? Gun laws don't apply. Regular laws don't apply because there's already laws that say you can't do that. But you do, right? You can't pew pew people. It's already against the law. But they still do it. So why would a gun law, why would they be like, ah, oh, shoot, now I can't get my hands on, they're going to get their hands on anything they want. Criminals have always had an easier time to get firearms than law-abiding people. Background checks. They're like, what push for background checks? There's always been background checks. People that don't know don't understand this. People that don't know literally think you can just walk in to uh, uh, any gun shop and buy a fully automatic machine gun, be in and out with the weapon in 15 minutes. That's what literally what they think. No, it's not the way it is. That's the way it is for bad guys, though. But they're not gun shops. They're sold on the street. Stolen guns, whatever. The bad guys get whatever they want without the background checks. No matter what laws change, the bad guys are con going to continue to do that. And they know this, and we know this, and this isn't a crazy theory. This is something that's proven by their own actions all the time, right? So they don't have the interest to do things that will actually protect the kids. That's what it comes down to. Because we know what it would take. We know what it would take. The same way we protect our families, right? We do things to make sure our families are safe. And they do things to make sure their money is safe. But, so it is what it is. The whole trans thing is an interesting thing to me. Like there's some media, no matter what side media, mainstream media, they're all giving you crap, right? It's, there's no real truth on either side. That's up to us to figure out because they're all leaning one way or the other. But there are some that definitely, they, they don't like this, this whole trans thing. They're like, oh no, oh no. Now our male is named Audrey. Darn it to heck. Our male is not a male. He used, one of them mentioned uh, that they, they keep using they and them, uh, use he, him pronouns. So that's important to know. Thank, thankfully they put that out there. The bottom line is, it was a mentally disturbed person, not a mentally disturbed pew pew that ran on down there and did its thing, right? We need to, we need real protection for kids or homeschool. That's one of, one of many reasons we homeschool, many, many reasons, because we know our kids will be protected and safe. And the response to this incident by the police was much better than the nightmare of Uvalde, right? Where those were just cowardly people who that was just terrible we're not getting into that again so it was much better right 11 minutes after the initial call after the first initial call uh they were on scene and i think it was within 14 minutes of that call the shooter was down but and 11 minutes that's that's a long time 11 minutes is a very long time when you are in danger think about that and sit there with a stopwatch and watch 11 minutes go by. Something is here right now. You're in danger, immediate danger right now. Start the clock. Once it reaches 11 minutes, that's when help arrives. Add three more minutes for when the help actually helps. So we're going to call it 14 minutes. And the police chief... Uh, or the sheriff or whatever it is, I forget what the department is, I think it was the police chief, said he's perfectly good with that. They like to be quicker, but he's good with that. Why? Because statistically it's not terrible. But it's a long time. And this is something we've pushed, not pushed, but you know, tried to promote for a long time. You cannot rely on police to protect you, to pr protect your kids. Whether you're at home, wherever you are, your business, your work, you cannot rely on police. 11 minutes. A lot can go by in 11 minutes. In 14 minutes, a lot can go on. But do that stopwatch experiment if anybody wants to. And just think about all the... Think about that. Think about, you know, you know someone pulls a pew-pew on you. And you say, 
hold on a second. I'm going to pull my own in 11 minutes. It's not, it's just not realistic. Damage is going to be done unless there is an immediate response, which is why it is up to all of us to protect ourselves and our kids. Protect yourself where you work. Protect the kids at school, everywhere. These gun-free zones are craziness. Like I said, sitting ducks. That's all that is. The police are a cleanup crew. They come and write down what already happened and take pictures of what already happened. In some cases, they can take some action, right? And in this case, yeah, had they not responded, obviously it would have gone on and on. But they have to document and take pictures of what already happened. If people were there in any situation to protect themselves, when the police get there, what, what are they going to get? Mostly, they're going to have to get some pictures and they're going to have to get statements. Statements detailing what you did to protect yourself. How you eliminated the threat without having to wait 11 minutes, 14 minutes, Uvalde. 90 minutes, right? Just ridiculous. So this again stresses in the point that they are saying that is a good response time because statistically it is, but that's terrifying. Put yourself mentally in a, in a situation where it, it's, you know, tragedy is here now. You need help immediately, but you have to wait 11, 14, 15, 90 minutes. It depends. Who knows? They got lucky with 11 minutes on this one. Very lucky. That was good. And those cops, I'm not knocking those cops. They did a good job, right? They went in there and they eliminated the threat. But had somebody already been there for just such an event, like they are at banks to protect money, it wouldn't have waited 14 minutes before that threat was eliminated. Just saying, just a thought, something to think about. It, it, again, proves a point we've made over and over. But anyway, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Share your opinions. I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Twist a little truth. See you soon.